on this installment of Creative Cabin Fever, we travel. We travel to South Africa. Oh, I know holidays are something that we just really, really miss. Um, so I can't really bring you too far, but I can bring you to South Africa through the screens, and that's pretty cool. So we're going to meet Chantal Van Tee. She is a folk singer from Cape Town. And that's really exciting. Thank you so much for doing the show. Pleasure. Thank you for having me. Yeah, no, uh, the second the words Mazzy Star and Hope Sandoval were used in an email, <laughs> I was lured. Like, I mean, the more Hope Sandoval we can have and the more hope we can have in this moment in time, the better we're all doing, you know? <laughs> I'm glad to hear that. <laughs> yeah, and I've listened to your stuff and it's very reminiscent of Hope Sandoval. And that's, that's a rare quality to find in someone. So how did you find your voice, Chantal? Um, I think, well, I, I mean... I've, I was in a band before doing my solo work and another band before that. So it's been, it's been just a phase of, of wanting to write my own music and also writing things that didn't feel too tampered with. Um, and especially this record that I have now, it was all, there were organs around and it was recorded on vinyl. So it, it, it just had a lot of like raw elements about it. Um, and especially my solo music now, because I'm still in another band, it, it just, it has to be a place that, that, that isn't too thought of. And I mean, I have influences of like a lot of old school folk artists and alternative artists. So yeah, it kind of just happened. It kind of just happened. Yeah, that's incredible. That's amazing. And it's great, like uh, recording straight to vinyl. I, I recently watched a live stream actually from this uh, band that are based in Canada. They're incredible. Um, and they released their live shows record to vinyl straight away. So as they're doing oh. live cast, they are recording that shit onto vinyl. <laughs> That's so crazy. I know. It's amazing. And then they release like a hundred vinyl that if you were lucky enough to watch the show, you can actually have <laughs> a vinyl. What are they called? Oh, that is a great question. <laughs> so true. Oops. Yeah. No, so they, they reached out to me. This is really weird. Their photographer reached out to me because she thought I was interesting and she saw what I was doing. She was like, oh, we're doing a thing. Do you want to watch our thing? And now every time they have a thing, she's like making me watch it and it's always really interesting I so cool yeah i can't remember their name right now crap they it because you know like on bob dylan's old records and things like that when you watch they did that live i think that's that's the thing that we forget is that those artists and like some of the greatest songs were live they had a band and that's why you can kind of sometimes hear there's a little bit of like droopiness in it but it's it's really cool i think it like makes the light the humanness of it it's yeah. not like cut paste it adds so many dimensions. We've forgotten everything in this digital age. You know, mm. it's so polished. It's like, there's this band that keeps popping into my head. Like, I'm not, not going to mention them, but like, I love them live. Love them live. And every time they release a song now, I'm like, where's your magic? Your magic has completely disappeared. Like, it's mm. like a mashup of things that you all kind of agree on, but there's no real voice or reason behind it. Your energy is completely gone. Uh, yeah. it, it's really not who your essence was to me and it's 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 yeah it's too polished it's it's not right it's weird yeah. and then <laughs> other bands doing this stuff like live to vinyl or like you know like how songs used to know or how people used to know if songs were good enough you ever hear about the great mm. test the great wizard test the great That's... whistle test oh whistle test no but that sounds cool what is it <laughs> okay, so this, this is fascinating right so they used to go and record songs and then they would leave the songs play and the cleaners would come in and they were called the Grey Whistle Test Ladies, right? Because if they still remembered the tune and they were still whistling it, then you knew you were onto a song oh. that was good enough for you to actually worry about. That was going to be your hit. Wow. The Grey Whistle Test had been embedded. So whatever song was embedded into their heads was a song that was going to communally work. That's amazing. We should be doing that now. Yes. <laughs> Your friends are singing it. Not just one friend. <laughs> but those earworm songs, like, they're very easy to recognize. And they're just, there's something so special in that essence. Like, the fact that there's something that just takes you over, that it stays in your head. And you're just like, wow. Yeah. 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 So amazing how some songs just have that. You catch yourself and you can't get it out of your head, like, the whole day. 
something about it. Yeah, it's kind of like magical in some way. Whistle test. I mean, it sounds magical. <laughs> Well, I, I started doing reviews recently for Damaris magazine and I have been listening to songs. So like Kozak, like the leader of the magazine, uh, but he's kind of like more a partner in business to me anyway, because we work very heavily together, you know, and uh, he was like, so uh, these reviews, how are you doing them? I was like, well, I'm listening to the song 42 times and then... What? I'm getting an idea of who the people are through their music. I'm not reading anything about them. I don't want to know anything beforehand. So it falls wow. two times. And then I'll decide if that's a song I actually feel enough about to review, whether it be good or bad. Like if I listen to your song 42 times and I still think it's a really bad song or it has merit, <laughs> yeah. but it needs to be worked on and I can see what you're trying to do, but it's not my jam. I'll write mm. about that fairly. But there's this one song called The Moon by Bamba. And I think I've listened to it 165 times. I mean, wow. <laughs> wow. It's incredible. And this band are really, really mysterious. And they just released another song called Just a Child there two weeks ago. So I did the, the next review for that will be, will be up on Demar's magazine on Thursday, I believe. And I was like, I just listened to a song 165 times because usually when you're doing reviews like because we were starting to do it and we didn't really have anything to do so we just picked mm. uh, we just picked songs that kind of we liked and then we'll see what happens now people yeah. are sending us emails you know with full press packs and the idea of what the song is that's way easier to review yeah 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 <laughs> it's like oh this is what you want me to say about your song yeah sure i'll do it yeah <laughs> you said it already but it's amazing if you can, if you can. I mean, that's something that I always think and I'm hesitant when people ask you what songs are about because there is magic in someone just listening to it. And I mean, as, I guess as a reviewer as well, that's probably part of that magic is if you connect to it. You don't just want to review a song that you're like, oh, I can hear that it's like well produced and it's this and it's, it's like you want to feel something. You don't want to just like... Like what I was saying, the fact that some songs are over polished now that they've lost all their magic, I find that. Like, yeah, yeah, it sounds good. Yeah, it does. And yeah, most people don't listen to music the way I listen to music. Like, I have to feel emotion. Like, yeah, that's why music exists to me. Like, it's... Yeah, me too. It drives me. And other people just listen to music because it's there. So... Yeah. <laughs> depends who you're trying to appeal to, you know? Yeah, yeah. That's amazing. It's really cool to hear that that's what you do. I never thought I'd be reviewing music. I'm going to be honest with you. I was, I'm dyslexic. I was told my whole life I wouldn't be able to write. And now all of a sudden I write for a magazine. <laughs> that's amazing. That's amazing. Did you ever play music yourself? Uh, I play bass and I have a steel tongue drum. And actually, I can sing quite well, but I lie to everyone and say I can't. <laughs> Well, when are you going to play for us? <laughs> I don't know. I was, I was in a punk band when I was 16. That was cool yeah. for like about two months. That's pretty cool. It's very cool. <laughs> I can see you doing that. <laughs> yeah. No, it was. It was loads of fun. We used to do like um, school like um, recitals, I guess is the word you'd use, like uh, band shows and stuff. That was really great. Yeah. I miss kids doing that. Like, you know, like obviously now everything's a bit on hold. But I'd love yeah. to rake the kids together for like uh a band tournament, you know? Yeah, yeah, what World of the Bands, there's always this, uh, Battle of the Bands, that's one, Battle of the Bands, yeah. <laughs> yeah. That would be amazing. Yeah, that would be super cool. So what age were you when you were in your first band then? I was 17. I had convinced my parents to let me do homeschooling because I wanted to finish early and do acting, but then I met, well, film acting, and then I met my brother's friend who was looking for a singer of the band he was trying to start and I also I didn't think I could well I, I didn't think I could sing and but my brother was like just go and I auditioned in his garage um, and we started this whole yeah it started this whole career Boop. <laughs> just like that it's so. funny when you push towards the stuff that sparks joy in you the amount of beauty that can just come back your way yeah and, and and when you don't realize the the like um, meaning or purpose that something can give you until it until it starts, you know, like music. I I also always thought I was maybe a bit shy. Like I was involved in playing a bit of music, doing this, doing that. But it's crazy once you feel oh, you know, like 
you, I guess it's a little bit of confidence, but there's also, it's more than that. It's not, it's, it's, I think when you do it for more than just like being a good musician, that, that kind of meaning or purpose is, creates like a lot, a lot more of a long, long-term involvement, you know, or long-term love and, you know, like how you say you listen to music, it's the same thing. It's like you have to, you have, it's got to be like a part of your being, about a part of you to like really get you like that and <laughs> just keep going. No, absolutely. Like I think purpose and connection are the driving forces behind the you know, good. So anything you yeah. do that allows you to engage with the whole of what we are because people keep seeing themselves as, as just units like we are all connected we are all one and what you need to do is find that driving force that connection that allows you to fulfill your dark drama you know you're like your actual purpose to be yeah it's, it's it's not to just work and plod along and have five cars and seven holidays no <laughs> yeah i mean if that makes yeah, you think... happy <laughs> totally and I think people get the illusion that they have to have things or do things to be the people that they want to be. And I think that's like, I mean, there is, I think there's always a base level as like any creative career. There is, people need to be aware of the struggle of like, there is a base level of survival. And I think that's what most people see when they look at, they go like, oh, well, are you going to be able to survive? And like, maybe you have to do things to survive. <laughs> but the, I think that's where meaning and, and survival are really interesting because there's only so long that you can do certain jobs that don't make you grow, don't make you have meaning before you realize, you know, like, that's not a life where I don't want to live, you know, and I think a lot of people maybe either they realize that may even later down the line, so you rather want to realize that sooner than later, yeah. <laughs> yeah, no, absolutely, like, uh, sometimes I wish that I didn't, like, realize my purpose because it was a lot easier to go around blind, blind you know yeah yeah I feel the same <laughs> but then other times I'm like oh my god I'm so freaking lucky like how did I get so lucky to know what I wanted like um it's just yeah or what I was yeah. looking for you know I'm a driver like I'm here to push people I'm here to make sure people get seen so I, I don't really get the creative like I am very creative I have to be creative for events and ideas and stuff like that yeah but I don't get seen like I'm I put mm. on the show like then it's up to the front man to like, kind of like a band like but it will always be yep. the front man will get seen it will never be anyone else who puts the work in you know yeah yeah but it's important role that's the thing none of them can exist without each other it's very symbiotic yeah yeah, yeah. What's life in lockdown in Cape Town like? So, like, obviously we're in Ireland and we have the media and stuff, but we don't really get to see anywhere else in the world. So I'm really curious, anytime I interview someone outside of Ireland, what, what's, it, what's it been like in a pandemic in a different country? Um, yeah, it was, it's nothing like we've ever experienced before. I mean, we were on solid lockdown. I'm sure, like, the rest of Europe in April, was it April? April, we went from, yeah, April, May, um, it's only the last month that we've sort of started opening up, and it was really weird, because I, I left the city, um, I went to go stay with my family, but outside, more in the countryside, so it was really nice, because I could roam outside, but for a lot of people, you weren't allowed to go outside, unless you went to the shops, um, and now, I mean, when I first came back, I was so shocked, because there they were, you know, the odd person, walking without their mask, but they'd get mask shamed, like people would mask shame them if they weren't. And now in this last couple of weeks, people are going about their normal business, like everyone has to wear masks and because we've just reached what we call level one, because we had a state of disaster. So there was everything from, you know, like it was really terrible for restaurants. I mean, we haven't been able to play any live shows at all. Um, I'm playing my first semi live show to 50 people next week with my band, which is cool. But everything was completely shut, you know, and it, it was really hard for a lot of industries. Um, it, and our country, in terms of its poverty, was really hectic. Um, but, yeah, it, it feels quite weird to be almost on the other side because, you know, businesses are opening and restaurants are opening with 
registrations and things, but it also doesn't, it feels like the new normal. Like you can't go anywhere without your mask. It's the way that, you know, I'm, I don't know what it's like in Ireland, but that's the thing. It's like you leave the mask, I mean, the the house, and if you've forgotten your mask, it's like you super, you know, like you can't go anywhere. So, yeah, that's kind of a summary of of how it's been. It was really strict for like three months up until, yeah, the last two weeks or so. And in Ireland? We started lockdown on the 12th of March. I will never forget that day because I had a big event planned on the 14th of March and uh, I was having breakfast, trying to get everything organized for the event. And our president, our Taoiseach, came on the radio and was like, going into lockdown at midnight. And I was like, <laughs> so over the last three months, little by little, our freedoms have been coming back. Um, we don't have yeah. masks in the streets. Some people choose to. Like, I mean, I don't really see the point, to be honest, because you're out of open air. I mean, unless mm. you're going to go up and lick someone, it's kind of pointless having a mask on. Do you know what I mean? Uh, but yeah. we do have to wear them in shops and stuff. So, yeah. fair enough, you know, because everyone's terrified. So, um, I got a little mask yeah. made with Adventure Time on it, so it's cute. That's super cute. <laughs> Are they, they, it's so, it, it's like... I mean, that's the thing, if you can work at home and stuff, then you're lucky because you don't have to. But, I mean, only recently I also started going to play where I had to wear a mask often. And it, I don't like it. I don't like it. It's so nice to just, like, when no one's around, you just, like, <laughs> take your mask off. Or, yeah, yeah, I know, it's, it's a very strange time. Like, same as yourself, there haven't been many uh, live gigs. I was lucky enough now, three weeks ago, I went to a restaurant that is in a venue that I usually work in and I got to see two of my friends perform live on a stage that was far away while we were eating, <laughs> which was amazing, right? And then there was another gig in a theater, but again, restrictions are 50 people in the venue. So yeah, um, I'm hoping to actually plan a hybrid uh, gig over the next few weeks. I'm, I'm waiting to get answers. But um, yeah, so the idea would then be have 50 people in the venue and then do a live stream as well, which brings more people awesome. in. And I was actually yeah. part of such an event uh, Sunday just gone. So a really, really cool Waterford artist called Paul J. Bulger asked me to do the PR work for his gig that was going on. I was delighted. And I was like, do you have anyone for the social media on the night? He was like, no. So I ended up doing all like writing back to everyone as Paul while the gig is going <laughs> on and then going up on stage with the questions for the Q&A, which is amazing. That's so awesome. That was, yeah, that was a hybrid gig as well. So we had 25 people in the venue and we had the live stream and there was about 150, 200 people watching from home, which is great. That's, see, that's the thing in some ways, like that might be the new normal for a while is like a few people in the room and then it does open up. That's one thing, like a positive thing I was thinking about, even though there's not like the live shows that we need to actually make the money that we need as artists. There is this element of being able to all of a sudden play to people that are all over the world, you know, cause I, I did this bands in town show and, at some point, while well, we did a pre-recorded live, there was like 15,000 people on the live stream that Bands in Town had done. And it was like people from Canada and from, you know, all over. And it, it, that was a really cool thing, is this thing that we haven't really been doing um, or been able to do. You know, like we have to come tour there for a month and then you do PR and you do this and then you... It's different to just being able to do the live show and anyone that does already follow you or like you can watch you versus waiting a year or something to I mean it's obviously much better seeing someone in live a live performance but for the interim yeah well in the meantime I mean I think doing pre-records is, is great but if you're able to do a live which brings us back to what we were saying initially about the, the, the vinyl and how all that was recorded if you're able to give people a live mm -hmm. stream that is actually live everyone's benefiting because even those little mistakes you make they actually add magic everything you're doing and people are watching you as you're actually doing it so you're feeding off them and they're feeding off you and it's not yeah. the new format but it's a beautiful exciting new format that we have to mm. like uh, everything's so uncertain planning anything yeah. today is just impossible yeah it's true <laughs> The yeah. future. <laughs> I know. Like you were, you were hoping to be coming to Ireland um, this month, and yeah, the... yeah. So I mean, all because of the album launch. So beginning of November, um, and I mean, I think that's been the hardest thing. 
this year it was going to be earlier in the year and then obviously things were looking fickle so then everything got pushed but I was so hopeful for this you know, like this section of the year to really have changed. But we don't know. It's like, I hear people are, oh no, shows are only starting to happen next summer. You know, well, your summer. I think, yeah, your summer. Um, and that's a really long time. It's a really long time because it, it's, it's like, you know, you're used to making plans. You have to make them in advance, but like not that advance. Or just like having to push things back the whole time. Um, that sucks, yeah. Yeah, not being able to come there. <laughs> it does, and I'm finding it really difficult. So, like, all the ideas I have, they're great, and I can put a lot of them to use. But anything that I cannot commit to completely, I've tended not to go near because it's wasting my energy. So, if I'm, oh, this would be a great idea. Let's let's try for that. And then I know that any day now, it could just be pulled from me. I'm like, no. Like, yeah. Did this opening in a garden, which this is this is weird. Like this probably blow your mind. It'll blow anyone in South Africa looking at this, blow their mind, right? So we're allowed to have fifty people in a venue, right? But yeah. outdoors, you're only allowed fifteen people. That you'd think it's like the other way around because of air, <laughs> you know? right? Yeah. So I started planning this garden opening because I'm part of this community garden and we wanted to have music and a live show. Okay, so that was it was brilliant. Mm -hmm. And at the time we started planning, we could have 100 people there to show everyone the community garden, which I was super excited about, you know, because it's a beautiful space. We've reclaimed mm -hmm. this old English barracks. So like it got knocked down wow. after the rebellion and everything. So there's just this, this land plot completely like decimated it was used for nothing and then yeah. i met this group of people and they transformed this place into an oasis and there's about to be like places where people can plant at the end like have their own allotments wow. it's magical like it's magical so i wanted to give them the yeah. best day ever so they've asked me to be their pr and events pricing and i'm really excited about all the things we can do in the future but we already planned that we were going to open on this particular date so it was culture night like that's a, a festival they do in ireland where they get all the art galleries around to do something for culture night so i was like yeah we're going to do it we're going to do it and the week before the event happens they're like, yeah, but you can only have 15 people there. So it was just as well. I planned in the wow. reality that we can only have so many people. It's going to be an invite only event that we don't tell anyone about. Because I was like, we're not going to release this information to yeah. until we know. So we're going to plan as if 100 people are coming, but we're going to also have it completely secret until we're sure. So is it still... So it so went what? ahead with 15 went... Uh -huh. And then I live streamed it from my phone, so it wasn't the best quality, but it was was uh, it was going to be an acoustic thing, and I didn't have a crew behind me to do it in a garden. Like you can't really get, yeah, a film crew and everything in a garden. So we had some of it live streamed by Waterford Near Pocket, an incredible Waterford company who showcase all of Waterford's magic. So they came, and I got a little interview in there live. That was brilliant. And then we did the show with the fifteen people. The mayor was there to cut the ribbon. Everything went as it was supposed to, just for a lot less people's engagement or enjoyment. Yeah. Well, well, I'm glad that you, it worked out. It, it happened. It got to happen. Yeah. That's what I mean. Like, it's just so much energy. So many of my plans have been canceled, you know, or changed at the last minute. Yeah. And you're just like. Yeah. I think if that's one thing we're all used to, it's just like a smack in the face this year. <laughs> like, you thought you were going to do this? Now. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Yeah, and it's just getting smarter in how we actually go about things. So, like, you're doing your first live gig um, this month with 50 people in attendance and a full band. That must be incredibly exciting for you, Chantal. Yeah, I'm really excited about it. It's they Also, it's the same place, like, during lockdown, well, about a month ago, I did the Bands in Town stream. And um, it's cool because it's also, they, they're trying to do it properly. They've got a whole rig and camera crew. Well, a friend of mine, she set it up and... Um, it's just nice that there's this one place now that it's working. Like you said, you know, it's it is a mission getting people in to connect all these things. So, I I like I don't at home have the equipment to do a proper live stream. Like if I when I've done a live stream, you know, it's like it's not great quality, but it's still cool to have done it, um, like on one's phone. So it's nice to be able to do something proper and also just to be able to play to real people and not just screen people. Because like you play and then you go look at the screen and you're like. Look at the comments. Well, that's, that's what I've experienced. To have me on board because you can yeah. play and I can just be typing away, pretending to be you. And people think you're a magician. 
There you go. Yeah, exactly. How does she do two at once? <laughs> yeah. Girl is powerful. Girl is so powerful. <laughs> Yeah, so during the pause stream, there's actually people going, how, how is he responding to it? <laughs> like, oh. Oopsie. Yeah, you know. He's got a little, he's got a little underarm <laughs> type. <Exactly. laughs> yeah, no, it's, it's great, but it is, it is tough because you're right. You're doing it from your phone. You're just like. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yeah. And you yeah, want to give interaction and you need to give interaction because it's, it's what we're all missing is that connection and mm. that interaction so mm. yeah and especially with the band versus my solo music like i think it's easier to play more relax you know like slower music or calmer music because but with like when you're making noise you want people because then it's like you're making noise and then you know in a crowd if everyone's there and there's an energy then you can feed over that energy now you have to just imagine the energy <laughs> yeah, yeah it's tough it's really really tough especially now that you're about to release your album finally like so when's the release date for that Chantal? 23rd of october so that's just under a month away which is really exciting scary <laughs> i love yeah. the number 23 so it's short. thank you me too <laughs> 2311 so that'll be a really healing one so that's great yeah yeah Oh, 2310. 23, oh, 2310. 10. Mm. Yeah, a 2311 sounds cool. <laughs> Should have no, changed don't change it. it. No, no, no. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, this year has just been this big, massive blur. Like, I never really know what month is what month. Everything's mm. fast and very slow at the same time. It's just. Yeah. Yeah. No, I've also found that. And how is the. In, do you find. Are there a lot of acts touring Ireland? I don't know how it works in Ireland, but. Is everyone sort of just staying in their city? Right, so everything opened back up. And two weeks ago when I was doing the garden, I was also meant to be working in Dublin. And the day I was meant to leave for Dublin, they got locked down again. So I couldn't get to Dublin. And then this weekend, I was meant to be going to Donegal uh, because we had a music festival planned. And the music festival couldn't happen because Donegal are now in lockdown. So I think the lesson here is I'm not meant to leave Waterford for a while. You should, yeah, you gotta stay. Because <laughs> every time I predict to go somewhere, they get locked down within 24 hours of me meaning to be there. So it's just been a bit. Wow. Like, oh, okay. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> yeah, that's how I felt. Just gotta stay here till the end of the year. <laughs> like, there's not really many live gigs on, there's a few. Uh, most people are staying within their counties, which is fair enough. Uh, there's no real tours on at the moment. Nothing like that's even invisible. I meant to be mm. getting a French band over because they wanted to tour with me in January and we had everything kind of worked out to do the thing. That's awesome. But um, What do you think? Mm, no. 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 I, 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 I really don't think I'm like, I mean, 2021 is a very, 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 very positive. Um, yeah, it's, it would be brilliant. I don't like maybe maybe summer of 2021 and I'm even looking at some of the festivals over here and what they've had to put in place in order to be allowed to have festivals and those things I wouldn't be comfortable with going mm. to a festival under those um, guidance or whatever so it might only appeal to a certain dynamic of people and then you're kind of shortening the margin again so even if you mm. don't have 100 people there you can have that 100 people there if they're getting their temperature taken regularly yeah. if they're being tested under the armpits and if they're wearing masks at all times and that is not something like i would not enjoy myself i would feel yeah. like being watched all the time and for me you yeah. that you enjoy so as much as i respect these are the things that need to be done they're not the things that i would i would rather watch a live stream from my bedroom eat and take away in my underwear yeah 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 actually that sounds like a really good friday night yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> typing whatever I want when no one can yeah. see in my underwear, ribs all over my face. <laughs> yeah. That sounds really good. <laughs> in my bed, singing my songs. Yeah, no one can see. <laughs> Unless you want them to. to. Yeah, exactly. Like, uh, how are things with you? Are you able to tour within? No, not quite. Um, I mean, actually, the flights have opened up now, locally. Um, so, I guess they might be, but because there's no sh live shows yet, it's only literally since this Monday that we're allowed 50 people in a venue. So it's super new. Um, 
I think I might be able to go. There's a, fe- a mini festival, same as what you're saying, happening in November, that I might be able to go play up in jo- Joburg side. But other than that, I think everyone's also just so confused. Because every time, like you say, because it takes money to plan stuff, and then, boom, all the money's lost. So, like, the arts and culture department and the government's been bailing us out, you know, bailing things left, right, and center. I don't know where this money's coming from. So I think it's a bit scary for a lot of creative, well, people in the arts and culture. Like, I, I, I also think of dancers. I think of, I mean, actors, more dancers, actors yeah. painters, yeah. poets. Medi- yes, exactly. Like, where, I mean, obviously online, but still, there's tickets being sold online. I mean, as a musician's perspective, you don't, it's not lucrative enough at all. I don't know what it's like for other. I think maybe where artists at least are lucky is from like streams or if they have merchandise or something like that. But in terms of um, actual live shows, I think it's a pretty tough year. Yeah. What's it like in the radio industry? <laughs> oh, look, a lot of stations were closed down, so they had to do everything from home. And then they were able to go back in so you could have people in the studio, but that only happened over the last two weeks. And then depending who you are in the station, whether you feel comfortable enough to have someone in there with you, you can do that, or it's going to be a phone in interview. And then like a lot of the DJs were doing like pre-records from home. So like what I'm doing now, but without cameras, so just having like, but then you see the thing is you go from being used to doing a live show, which takes two hours. Like usually each section is like two to three hours, depending who you are and what you're doing. To, yeah. It takes about, like, so if you're doing two hours, it'll take you four hours to compile it. Wow. Because you're not doing it live anymore. So you're going to start getting really, really, like, um, precise about how you talk. You're like, oh, I don't like the sound of that one. So I'm going to do that one again. And then you're like, oh, I don't like how they go into each other. So you're going to be doing that again. And instead of just playing the song, now you have to play the song, record the song, put the song in, Mm. mess around with it, and just make the body of work two hours long. So, yeah, you're talking four hours to be two hours worth of the job. Wow. Wow. How many of that do you have to do in a week? Uh, <laughs> for me, for instance, I've cut my show down to twice a month and I actually haven't done it the last two months because I've been busy with other projects. But yeah, so I was doing, I was like, so, yeah, so we're talking eight hours, eight, eight to 10 hours work for four hours of someone's listening. Wow. Wow. But a lot of people were actually writing in saying that, you know, the radio show is making a difference because I, I tend to be quite positive. So if you're talking about positive things in the middle of the pandemic and stuff, like I was doing my show from the garden at one point as well. So and that's awesome. Birds <laughs> chirping, do you know what I mean? And I was talking about my flowers, like some crazy lunatic in her garden. But <laughs> there was people who were too scared to go outside that were like, yeah, no, that really was cool because I heard the birds in the middle of the song and I really liked that. And I was like, oh, okay. So I'm still doing my thing. This is good. Yeah. Yeah. I think it makes a big difference. Yeah. Like being able to have, especially with radios, you know, or I mean, if people can listen at their homes or in a car, if they are starting to drive, radios are, are this like dangling center, you know, that you can hear everywhere. It's sort of. Yeah, they're always on in the background. Like, that's a great thing. Like, uh, another great artist from Waterford I was interviewing recently, um, she recently started listening to the radio again. Because she hadn't been for so long and she was like, oh, yeah, I used to use Spotify the whole time. But now the radio is good because it's actually a conversation. So I feel involved with someone. I'm not just, you know. Yeah, like forward, click, pause. (laughs) I have this mad game I play with my radio. I'm going to tell you about it, like, just in case you want to play a mad game. So do you know a magic eight ball? Mm Mm-hmm. Okay, so imagine you're playing Magic 8-Ball with your radio. So ask the universe a question and then turn the dial until you hit the first song and that song will have the answer to your question. I like that. That's awesome. Yeah. I've, I've sometimes done it where I'm like really indecisive and the first, and you just need a yes or no. So whatever letter you look around, say you're going out, whatever, if it's a Y or an N that you see first, that's also the answer. <laughs> I like that. Just need a decision. I'm going to play your eight ball game. I like that a lot as well. I can be quite <laughs> indecisive. I'm a Libra, so I'm kind of always. Balance scale. Mm. <laughs> Do you find yourself like that? Quite often. Yeah. 
I, I find it very, very hard to stay grounded and very airy. Like, but that's also very necessary for you, the creative person I am. I need to be connected to something else at all times. I can't stay planted too long because then I get too comfortable and I don't flourish in a comfort zone. I need to flourish in the uncertain and um, yeah. Yeah. What sign are you? I, I'm on the cusp. I, I'm just as you enter Virgo. So I'm Leo Virgo, just as you get into Virgo, yeah. Which one are you more like, do you think? Uh, uh, uh. So recently I found out about this thing of rising signs. Mm -hmm. I don't know yeah. how much you know about that, because my friend's selling astrology and she told me, and I'm a rising Scorpio. And I almost feel more like that one, yeah. So it's interesting. I find I find them really interesting as well because I think being on the cusp, I feel like that. I think that's where my indecision also comes. I have like these conflicting. If we're going star side, full full on star side dog. I I definitely have a personality that's both extroverted and introverted. Like I need both. Like there's the element that can be the artist or the performer, and then I also just like hermit sometimes. <laughs> I want to be at home and like, you know. Um, I think people don't talk about that enough actually, because a lot of people think I'm very outgoing. Um, but I need to lock myself in my music room after any performance for a minimum of two hours by myself with whatever music sparks joy in me at that time, because I cannot people all of the time, all of the time. Yeah. Yeah, you need it. You need to regenerate your energy. I think it's an illusion to think that you're just gonna. Well, I mean, unless I'm sure there are people like that, but like you do, you do need to. It's important to know where you get your energy from. Like some people get their energy from, and I mean to some degree, if you're an artist or if you're a, a person that is in the public eye, like you do get a bit of energy from being around people. But then there's also, you need to go recharge again. I think you need to go like, <laughs> bye. Yeah. No, absolutely. Yeah. So that's nice. That's nice someone else just admitted it on air, you know. Yeah, no, it's yeah. Really hard. Yeah, yeah, no, it's hard being in the limelight. Like, <laughs> like uh, yeah. I, I'm wearing a t-shirt with my face on it. That's so great. Who made it? It's a mad story. Just all that's happened to me since lockdown is mad stories, right? So I decided I wanted to make merch because I spent the first four months of lockdown buying three band t-shirts a week to try and keep the industry alive. Like, it doesn't seem like much, but every single, wow. whatever local band I liked or I liked their merch, I was like, yeah, I don't even need to know your music. I like that t-shirt, so I'm going to buy it, right? And then I didn't know why I was doing that, but then during transmission, I wore 36 different band t-shirts. So while we had the 10-hour live stream with the 18 Irish acts, I actually made sure that 36 other Irish acts were on our screens at the same time. So I was what? as much as the Irish music industry out there as possible. So that's obviously why I was doing it, but I didn't know why I was doing it until I was doing it. And then I was like, okay, I really want to help the arts as a whole. So I'd like to get a graphic designer on board to make me a captivity. So this is what this is. I was going to ask what it says at the top there, yeah, captivity. And there's a T missing. I'm dyslexic, so I didn't change it. I left it, I left it as completely the wrong word because I think that makes it even better. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> So, yeah, I was like, okay, so I'll ask him to do a drawing and he can do whatever he wants. So it's completely what he wants to do for my t-shirt. I'm not going to have any, it's his thing. I'm going to pay him for the t-shirt and the money I make from the t-shirts, I'm then going to use to pay another graphic designer to do the same thing and keep different artists of different levels paid while I'm making t-shirts merch. So the money was never meant to be for me. This was to try and get the art community engaged in a different realm, right? Yeah. So... He comes back to me and I've just done this photo shoot with this incredible uh, local photographer called HK Stewart. Like she makes you feel like the goddess that you probably never knew you were, right? Wow. Takes this photo of my face and Mark is like, I am so in love with that picture. I am going to draw it. So he drew it like with this Merlin wizard here, which is amazing. I love it. And I like this little like lizard toad there and it's mad full of color and it's got my logo up here. And I was like, oh man, like I can't release a t-shirt with my face on it. Like that's <laughs> really weird. Nobody is going to buy my face, right? No, they will. Seven people bought my face. Boom. See, yeah. <laughs> yes. Yeah, you should keep selling them. Yeah, 
well we did them limited edition i'll see like people are now asking for them i had bought a second one for a friend of mine but i am um, when it when it when it arrived the little girl next door was like is that a t-shirt with your face on it and i was like yes can i have one i was just like yeah, you, you take it so that is a little 10 year old going around town going that's my neighbor she's famous she's on a t-shirt that's <laughs> so cute well, I hope there's one left when I come to Ireland. <laughs> I'll get you a different one. Three, give me one. <laughs> do you have any merch, Antel? Um, With the band, with Diamond Thug I do, but not with my solo stuff. That's something I'm working on. It's hard to know, like, okay, what... I'm still, like, trying to figure out what I'm going to put on a T-shirt or, or what else I'm going to make. Do you know what I think not enough people are actually using as merch? What? Plectrums. Good point. Because everyone's playing guitar more. They're very, very carryable, right? They're not yeah. too expensive to make. They are the perfect calling card for anyone. So any artist out there that's watching this interview right now, Rebecca Cappuccini says, make plectrums. Make plectrums, okay. We better get on it. Because <laughs> it is, it's something that you're always willing to take. You know when someone gives you a little plectrum or you people ask, take it. <laughs> There was this one yeah. band, Red Sun Alert, and they had lighters with their logo on it and a bottle cap opener. So they were also a very handy thing to That's have. That's pretty cool. That's pretty cool. Yeah. You need to, you need little nifty things. The people are like, oh, useful as well. <laughs> yeah. Double USB whammy. keys are another thing. So if you had loads of USB keys with your logo and your album on them. Yes. I like that idea. I, I've heard of someone that went around um, giving USBs, though that was their way of marketing. And I think they got picked up by some label, but that was their way of marketing it. It was like giving USBs all around. So smart. There are so many ideas out there, and this is what the pandemic is doing. Is it's forcing us to be more creative mm. within our creativity, and that's really interesting. Because I think we're yeah. all getting a bit complacent, you know. I can just tour whenever. Yeah. Oh, let me hop on a plane. <laughs> Unless you're in South Africa. <laughs> yeah, and I can't hop on a plane either because technically I'm unemployed and in Ireland you're not allowed to take holidays if you're on the dole or they'll cut you off. So I'm not even allowed what? in the country. Even though I'm working really hard with my own company, but because this is more seen as this because they have me on the welfare payment because I can't really work. Can't yeah. Do. Are you serious? Yeah, and my family don't live in Ireland. Like, So my parents live in France and my granddad lives in Italy. Can't go visit them. What? That's crazy. I don't know they do that. Are you, are you French or did they, your parents just move to France? They moved to France when I was three. So I'm, oh, wow. I'm Waterford, born and born, born. I came back when I was 14 and they stayed living over there. Wow. Well, your Irish accent is amazing. Thank you. But can you speak French? I can. Assuming. I can actually speak five languages. What? Yeah. Which, what, are, what, are, what are the ones? French, German, Italian, and a bit of Japanese. What? When did you learn how to speak Japanese? But that's, that's, when I was small, I was obsessed with Japan. I, I think it all started with a tree. I went to this botanical garden and I fell in love with this Japanese maple tree. And it was like, mm, I always went crazy. to this tree. Always went to this tree. And uh, I've, I've got my own one for my garden this summer, actually. It was a kind gift from a friend. So I called it Shido, which means seed wow. in Japanese. So Shido lives in the garden now, and I'm really happy. But uh, I just got obsessed with Japan. All things Japanese. Obsessed, obsessed. So when I was 11, I got myself the Rosetta Stone, and I started teaching myself Japanese. Yes. And then when I was 24, my parents worked for the UN, so they had friends in the US Navy, and they got me a US Navy pass. And so I was able to stay on all different Japanese uh, bases and stuff for three weeks. Okay. So, went to Japan. What? Okay, you sound like a very cool parents to have. Yeah. It was. It was a cool time. It was deadly. Have you ever travelled much outside of... Yes, uh, the last couple of years I've been lucky to... Um, actually, Japan, one of, my, one of my good friends has been on the... Just to mention, has been on the pilgrimage. And it sounds absolutely magical and incredible. She said, because she's an artist, she draws. Um, and she went for a few weeks. She did that, the, the pilgrimage. I don't know what area it is. I think it's Kyoto. Something like, anyways, 
I think so. And it sounds, but it sounds and looks absolutely amazing. Um, but yeah, I, I've been super lucky the last few years to be able to get to go traveling a bit with the band and also with my solo music. We've been in, into UK and Europe and we went to the States as well for South by Southwest. Um, but in terms of like other travels, there's so much I'd love to do. When I was 21, I went to, on a South American road trip. That was cool. Like Machu Picchu and all these places. Um, and yeah, I went to New York, where I also just like was falling in love with all the musical places and California. So I, I'm really lucky that I got to do that. I haven't been on a, say, holiday trip um, well, I try. When I get to go to a, um, like last year's world, then I try go do, hence coming to Ireland. Ireland wasn't, but then when I was in Dingle, I was like, oh, I can't be on an island and not play. It's got such amazing music and I wanted to see it. So I played in a little bar there. Um, so cool. People in Ireland are just so friendly. Well, that's how I experienced it. And like the music, everyone that plays music is just really good. I also found that it's like, you know, the next guy who's doing open mic is just like an amazing songwriter. So it was just really cool experience also to see that. Yeah, I know Ireland is full of magic. Really, genuinely, truly, I don't just say that. Like, it genuinely is full of magic. Like, I am very lucky to try and represent the Irish music scene the way I do because it, like, it's, it's, it's hard not to be passionate about that magic. Like, it's, it's really hard for me not to just be like, <gasps> <laughs> the time they just take my breath away and I see the potential and I see like I get starstruck the whole time it's just yeah it's amazing mm. yeah I was listening to an American friend actually sent me this Irish song I'm trying to remember the name it's called like is it the band called Pangsty Pang Pangs Pangsty Pangsty mm -hmm. yeah do you know them and they sing this like love it's like a love ah oh, it's so beautiful it's like a crying love song I want, I want to find it so i can tell you what it is um they great and then also one of my first addresses pogues pogues also really cool amazing. very cool yeah everything shane mcgowan does is amazing so who's one of who's in your eyes like some of the greatest irish um acts at the moment at the moment, like it's ever changing. There's this one band, um, if you're into kind of heavy jazz, right? I know it sounds mad. There's a nine piece from Dublin called Fern and Jane. And it's just this girl who swears a lot and talks about her emotions freely. And it's amazing. beautiful. Um, and it's just so much. There's just so much. There's this guy called Joshua Burnside. He's from Belfast. He released an album three weeks ago called Into the Depths of Hell. And it's just the most hopeful album. Like, it's incredible. Um, so, wow. Yeah, it's really, really beautiful. But there's just so much. There's too much to talk about. Just honestly, I couldn't. You might have to message me. You have to tell me on email. <laughs> yeah. I, I, reckon, I reckon we're going to be sharing playlists by, uh, by the end yeah. of the pandemic. You know, so, oh, that's my friend Chantelle over in South America. Uh, I'm just going to send her a thing. This is amazing. Yeah. you got to come visit. <laughs> I, I really yeah. hope so, because I've always wanted to go for a real bra, and I want to see actual, like, zebras, because they're, like, probably, like, my favorite striped animal. They're, 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 they're my favorite pattern of an animal. So they're yeah. not my favorite animal, but I love the look of a zebra. Yeah, they are cool. They're weird, but they're cool. They're just, like, glorified horses, you know. <laughs> yeah. yeah. They're like stripy unicorns, horses. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They're the funky unicorns. <laughs> but yeah, no, I'd love to. And then obviously when you're in Ireland, come find me. We'll go do a thing. I'll actually bring you on a holiday, you know, like a, a little, like a day away. I would love that. That would be great. I'll show you the sights. We could do something fun. I'd love that. It's probably not going to be 